Hey everybody, before I get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of ways that you can engage with me on a more personal level. I have a few avenues set up and I keep focusing on one and I figured, why don't I make a short little video talking about all of them real quick before we get into these uh, episodes. So first thing, Patreon. There's a link in the episode description and every episode description to the Patreon, as well as uh, a video on the feed called Major Announcement that has all the details of what each tier offers and how much they cost. I implore you to check that out. I offer a lot of cool shit for my patrons. Uh, second thing, the Discord channel. There's also a Discord link in the episode description and in every episode description. I have multiple channels set up there for each show that I'm covering, and it's a great way to just engage with me. I have a channel set up for... Uh, uh, MMA talk as well. I'm a big MMA fan. So if you're an MMA fan, you can check that out as well. There's a link to the discord in the episode description. And then lastly, oh, the Facebook and Twitter, social media, follow me on there. I post news on there. When I say news, I mean like, hey, I'm stopping covering this show. Hey, I'm starting covering this show. Let me know what you think about this. I do uh, live watches of things on Facebook where like I'll check in and say, I'm watching so-and-so show. And then I'll like live comment while I'm watching it. And that'll be cool if maybe you watch that show too and you want to watch along with me or you're watching it later and you want to see my thoughts, which are usually pretty entertaining because I'm usually pretty high when I'm writing them. So uh, check out all those links in each episode description and let's talk about this episode. Peace. One mic, one mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. One mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. One mic. One mic. One mic. Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mike. And today I'm here to talk about season three, episode six of Hulu's Only Murders in the Building, entitled Ghost Light. Now the title of this refers to the ghost theme, I think, for this episode, and specifically to the ghost light that Charles references at the theater, which is a light that always stays on until it burns out <laughs> when he's standing near it. Um I don't know, you guys. I I I just thought this episode was okay. Uh, it wasn't as funny as I generally find the show to be, and I feel like Meryl Streep has been so good in the episodes that she's been in that her absence is really felt when she's gone, particularly from a comedic perspective, surprisingly. Um, I didn't find the Gideon Gooseberry stuff to be e neither funny nor compelling, and I don't even really understand the need for a plot line surrounding Howard needing to get over a ghost character that we just introduced at the start of the episode. Now... This could have been part of a larger Howard-based Howard story that could work, but it all felt pretty pointless. It could have been that, but it, it felt pretty pointless in this episode. Like, for a plot line that is seemingly going to be self-contained in just this episode, that Gideon Gooseberry stuff was just not good to me. Like, I don't know. Having said that, not every episode is going to be a game-changer, and that's fine, uh, but let's talk about this one. So, the episode opens with Howard telling this story of Gideon Gooseberry, a guy who died on stage with a 300-pound uh, sandbag fell on his head. He goes to our, our Omit B crew and says that he wants to confess to killing Ben before the, right before the opening credits. And immediately the, the episode had kind of already irritated me with that, even before the song. Like, what was the point of that? Like, did any of you guys go, oh my God, what a plot twist. I can't believe Howard killed Ben. Like, nobody believed that. Like, I just rolled my eyes and went, okay, so he must have done something that he believes inadvertently resulted in Ben's death and now he feels guilty. Gee, never seen that before. And then they do the music and then it comes back and it's exactly what the fuck I just said. Uh, we find out there's some superstitious shit about sweeping Gideon off the stage before every show. He didn't do it on opening night because KT, the person I've been saying is the murderer for no reason other than the fact that they don't talk about her on the show a lot, uh, KT's office was locked. Howard then explains that he saw Gideon Gooseberry in his signature cap and red coat, asked if it was him, and he was like, I guess it's me. And that was enough to get us to where we are now. And I don't know, you guys, that felt really weak to me. Like, all of it felt weak, and it still does now. Like, that just felt, I mean, come on, man. Like, this is, you guys would think this was good, right? Like, come on, man. Like, all of a sudden, Howard's a dumb as fuck because we absolutely have to tell this Gideon Gooseberry story. So now Howard has to be like, yeah, I saw a motherfucker in the shadows. And I said, are you Gideon Gooseberry? And he said, I sure am. And now I, I, now I believe I'm haunted and that the ghost killed Ben. Like, come on, man. That was so weak. Uh, so Tyber comes out of Mabel's room in a towel, letting everyone know that they've been fucking. And he hears Howard's story and he makes the connection that Gideon Gooseberry must actually be Ben's, Ben's doctor that they saw at the bar. Cap, red coat. He saw that they saw him. 
and then he must have come to the theater to cover his tracks. A perfectly logical explanation. Explanation. Uh, our Oliver and Charles pull Mabel to the side, and they decide they want to go. That sound. I feel like I said it sounded like I said the side twice. <laughs> they pull Mabel to the side and decide that they want to go to the theater, and so they're gonna play up Howard's getting in Gooseberry's story as a means to do so. And again, I'm just like, man, y'all are working. Y'all aren't working very hard to give them a reason to go to the theater again. Like, yo, let's just pretend that this ghost story shit is for real so we can go. Like, come on, man. Uh, I, I did like Charles' poor use of spoiler alert in this scene. Like, when he used it after telling them that he enjoyed it broken up. I thought that was funny. Um, I also liked how truly happy Mabel seemed that they were all about to be together again. Uh, to that point, though, uh, Mabel points out how strange it is that Oliver, Oliver is all of a sudden into this investigation. But we know that it's because early in the episode he matched Loretta's handwriting from her scrapbook to the fucking pig that was written on Ben's mirror. And uh, again, kind of another point about like making these kind of like lazy kind of taking these lazy paths to get us where they want us to be. Like immediately I'm just like, even if Loretta wrote that on the mirror, like that doesn't mean that she, that's like in no way is evidence that she killed him. Like, I, I don't know, man. I, like that feels like a weak way to get me to buy into the idea that Loretta did it. And I'm just not, I don't know, I'm not buying it. But uh, Oliver wants to go investigate that, but he doesn't want to tell Mabel and Charles about it, so he makes several attempts at separating himself from them in order to do so. Uh, at the theater, they do this thing where they make it seem like Charles is being haunted. Uh, I didn't think that stuff was very good either. Like, he has a, he has a scene where, uh, you know, a couple of these these bags almost fall around him. The light that, was, uh, that I mentioned earlier, the ghost light, it goes out in his presence. Uh, he has another scene where he inexplicably, he brought his fish to the theater with him. Uh, he puts it in the back of a toilet and then begins to pee. And I can't imagine a single one of you didn't know he was going to reflexively flush that toilet. And I'm just like, man, this whole episode just feels really un unimaginative and lazy to me. Like, I'm, I'm sitting here like, okay, he's going to flush the toilet reflexively. And he does, and I'm just like, this isn't funny. It's not imaginative. They didn't even try. Like, I don't, I don't know, man. But I finally make it to KT's office. Uh, she shreds something that looks like a page from a, from a script with a bunch of highlights on it. Uh, Howard notices this, but it never comes up again. I'll probably see it later. Uh, the rest of the KT and Howard stuff in this episode was, I mean, what was the point? Like, I mean, and I, I mean, it has a point within the episode. Like, I don't need to, I don't need to explain to me what the point of it was within the context of the episode. What is the point of putting this in the show? Like, I, like, did this story of Howard getting over his his Gideon Gooseberry fear is this gonna is this gonna feed into the murder mystery in some way? If not, why did we have this? Um, it just wasn't any good at all. Like she teaches him about the true nature of Gideon Gooseberry, and I, I don't know. I feel silly even fucking talking about it because it's so stupid. But she says you gotta uh, accept him and not try to sweep him away. Howard does this monologue. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm just sitting there like there's no point to any of this. It's not entertaining. I don't know. The only useful takeaway from all of this is that Howard said that her office was locked and she said that she never locks her office, which means that someone must have been in there doing something with the door locked, which if you if you subscribe to that idea, then that kind of takes suspicion away from KT, which I'm not willing to do yet. So, uh, I don't know. I, actually, no, I take I take a little bit of this back. I did find it pretty sad when Howard said his dream was to be an actor, but then his mother said his voice was uh, matronly and shrill. I, 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 that was an interesting, that was a, a interesting takeaway. Not takeaway, but interesting. Uh, I don't even want to say interesting. That was a nice moment. That was a sad moment in this, uh, in this sequence. So our crew finds an attendance sheet, and Mabel comes up with the idea of matching the handwriting, which, of course, is not okay with Oliver. And then while Mabel and Charles are argue over Tobert, Oliver sneaks off and Charles leaves to find the aforementioned toilet for the fish. So Mabel is alone until Tybert shows up saying that he followed Jonathan there. Uh, Oliver verifies the handwriting up against the mirror and he's about to actually tell them what he's discovered, which to me, I thought he was trying to protect Loretta. But now that told me that he really just wanted to verify it for himself and then be the person to present you like, hey, my girl is the fucking person. Like, he just wanted to do that himself, which I think is a mature way to go about it. But watching him get to that point was, I mean, it's typical Martin Short. But he hears a noise, he goes upstairs, and he appears to be apprehended. 
Uh, Mabel and Tybert confront Jonathan, who reveals, just like I said, that he was getting a prescription from Ben's doctor, like the most, uh, Occam's razor like a motherfucker. Like, they presented a situation, I guess the most obvious thing is the reason, and then that was the right thing. Like, I don't know, man. Like this, like the thing with Howard confessing to Ben's murder, I just feel like it's a sign you kind of checked out when the most obvious explanation is the one that you went with. Anyway, we find out Oliver was taken by a guy named Jerry Blau, a former director who's now living in the theater. Uh, he tells Oliver all the stuff that we already knew. So nothing for us there really to take away from this. Uh, this scene existed solely for Oliver to learn the stuff that we already know. Uh, I did like when he called Charles an albino, though. I thought that was funny. Uh, the team reconvenes in the dressing room to find Oliver trying to wipe the fucking pig thing off the mirror. Uh, Charles says he's crossing a line, and Oliver blows up at everyone. He starts by pointing out Charles withheld the info about punching Ben, which is of course, which that then of course informs Mabel that that happened. Uh, Charles then says the theater's a death tra death trap, and that's Oliver's responsibility. Then Oliver says he's trying to uh, revive a dead career, and then Charles quits the play. And then Oliver turns his sights to Mabel, and she says that Cinda was right, and they're like, Cinda, the fuck? And she's like, yeah, she told me that I don't need you guys, and uh, you're too self-absorbed to help me solve the murder uh, of someone who is important to me, that being Ben. And she says Charles and uh, she says that that's it for them, and Charles and Oliver end the episode alone, while Mabel continues to look at the murder board with Tobert. And, you know, I think I've said throughout what I, what I need to say about this episode, but, I mean, yeah, I, I didn't think it was a good one. Uh, I think we need the conflict with the group, but when the story is as weak as it was in this episode, I think you need the comedy to kind of balance that out and make the weak story less evident. So having this downer of an episode when the story is also weak, yeah, it's going to make for uh, an unpleasant experience. But hopefully they bounce back next week. I expect them to. And until then, peace.